Uh, eight minutes or so I'm going to be talking about biotechnology but first I'd like to tell you a little bit about my journey so I came to UBC to do a PhD in microbiology and in um, during that time I was working on novel antibiotics and also during that time I realized I love science but you know being in the lab every single day was not really working for me so from there I went on and worked at Health Canada for a few years and then eventually I got myself a position as an instructor and at that time I realized that it was a it was a great job for me because it suited my personality. I like to be around people, as well as the fact that it was um, a very flexible job, and that was very helpful for when I did become a parent. But I would like to assure you that during my time as a scientist and biotechnologist, at no point in time have I ever created a genetically modified animal for purposes of weapons. <laughs> Nor have I ever created a genetically modified animal with freakish human intelligence. I've not been involved in the cloning of humans for, use, for uh, organ donation. And just for the record, I am not in favor of a future society where we allow genetic discrimination. But I have to say that these are some of my favorite books and movies, and I usually um, actually encourage my students to uh, well, watch, uh, definitely watch Yataka and reading Orange and Craig, for example. So, um, in, all serious, in all seriousness though, part of being part of biotechnology, I do find that I have to defend myself or explain myself at times. And I understand why this is the case, because I understand what the common associations are with biotech. And uh, every year I ask my students, I say, tell me, tell me what the first thing that comes to your head when you think about technology. And every year I get the same. Genetically modified foods. And I'm sure that many of you, as soon as you heard that I was going to be speaking about tech, probably that was one of the first things that went into your mind as well, the genetically modified foods. We know that this is a very controversial topic. We know there are many health and um, environmental concerns around it. Uh, in, in addition, I usually have people mention about cloning. And usually my students know, they think more about animal or plant cloning, but, you know, there are these fears that there will be human cloning. But um, again, there's many ethical concerns around that. And of course, the associations involved. On the more positive side, usually my students will mention pharmaceutical drugs and medical um, applications. But even then, we have the negative associations with the big pharmaceutical companies. And uh, in terms of popular culture, most people will associate forensics with, uh, with biotechnology. And I can tell you though that Things don't happen quite as quickly and in, in, in such an exciting way as they do with the CSI. <laughs> so, I would like to take a few minutes here to tell you about how biotechnology actually affects your day-to-day -day life in ways that you may not realize. For example, I would guess that one or two people in this audience may enjoy a glass of wine every now and again. And maybe some cheese with that as well. And wine and cheese and beer, this is all biotechnology. And even though it's biotechnology that's been happening for millennia, there are still scientists being hired in these industries to optimize these processes. Something else I'm certain everybody here is familiar with <laughs> is the home pregnancy test. And though may, you may not have been wondering, how, how does those blue lines show up? You just wanted to know whether they would show up. I can tell you that it's biotechnology behind those blue lines. And in fact, this general platform that is used for the uh, home pregnancy test is used in many rapid diagnostics. And the whole field of di diagn diagnostics is becoming bigger in the, healthcare, in the healthcare field, right? If we can rapidly diagnose, that's better for human health, it's better for healthcare dollars. Something that has been very much in the media as of even today is meat recall and uh, um, outbreaks of E. coli. And um, the fact of the matter is that we know the exact strain of E. coli that's involved in that outbreak, and we're able to trace it back to that meat and the meat source. That's biotechnology. And maybe not such a sexy topic, but sewage treatment is also uh, biological processes involved there as well. So I would like to take the next few minutes to tell you about a few things that I am personally excited about in biotechnology. I Personally, um, I'm, I'm very interested in the environmental applications of biotech. 
Oops. <laughs> that one away. So, for example, bioremediation. When there's a, a, bio, a large spill, an oil spill, and contaminated soil and water, it's biological processes that break that down. And biotechnology is involved in optimizing these processes. But in, an, in another um, environmental application that I'm very excited about is biofuels. And I'm not talking here about the biofuels from corn, because there is a debate around that as well, the food to fuel debate. There's a company right here in the Lower Mainland that's working on converting waste products, waste wood chip products, pine beetle killed wood, and, uh, or grasses that are, that are renewable, and converting that to biofuels. So that goes around that whole food to, food to fuel debate, and that's very exciting, right here in the Lower Mainland. <laughs> so I would, I would bet that most of us here, you can barely tell what that is. Can you tell what that is? It's a big mass of plastic bags. So we all felt a little bit of guilt about the plastic that we throw away. And we're all parents. And I'm sure that we've thrown away a broken toy. And we thought to ourselves, how many millennia is it going to take for that to break down in the landfill? We've, we felt the guilt. Bio biotechnology is working on fully biodegradable plastics. And in fact, biotechnology is also working on other industrial processes. We don't even realize a lot of the harsh chemicals and things that are used in, bi in industrial processes. And biotechnology is getting involved here to make it more green and more sustainable. And in on terms of uh, human health, on the human health side of things, there are a few things that um, I'm excited about. The idea of regenerative medicine. And I'm sure some of you have heard about this as well. But in, in this particular case, I'm talking about using cells from your own body, whether it's your skin cells or your bone marrow, and taking those cells and um, making them into replacement tissues and organs. And this bypasses the other ethical controversy around embryonic stem cells. And finally, there's the idea of personalized medicine. And this is the idea that we take our genetic code and from there determine our clinical therapy. This is already happening right now. We have chemotherapy and cancer treatment that is based on specific genetic mutations that are present. But this is something you're going to be seeing more and more of in the future. So those are so, a few of, the, uh, few of the things that I'm personally very excited about. But I have to say that leading up to this talk today, I was very nervous because I was trying to decide how I was going to relate motherhood to biotechnology. And in my mind, I was thinking, I chose this career path before I became a mother, so how am I going to make that connection? But then I realized that I'm actually not the same educator today that I was 10 years ago when I started. And the difference is that I became a mother. And obviously we all know how our views on the world and the, our future changes when we become a parent. So I do find myself, as I'm teaching, I encourage my students to ask the big, tough questions about our industry. I ask them, I actually encourage them to get to heated discussions. And then I ask them, ask the question, ask yourself the question, just because we can do something, should we? And if we should, what are the rules and regulations that we should be putting around it? I also find myself very much steering my students towards environmental applications because most science students come in to science thinking about medical applications. And that's great too, but I have to say that it's made me very happy when some of my students have said to me, I'm gonna concentrate on environmental applications. And that's when I realized that even though I myself am not doing science anymore, I'm directly influencing those that will be. And that in turn is influenced by the fact that I'm a mom. So uh, hopefully today I've been able to maybe broaden your horizons a little bit or, you know, um, have you realized that biotechnology is more than just a few key controversial issues, for one, and maybe even gotten you a little excited about some of the advances that are happening. And if not, I think we can all agree at, that at very least biotechnology makes for great fiction. Thank you very much. <laughs>